Hello, I'm David Schwegler. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In retirement, I spend much of my time as a volunteer for the McHenry County, Illinois Conservation District. In the winter of 2019-2020, I went to a meeting for those who were interested in gathering data for a phenology study. Phenology is the science of finding out when things happen in nature. We do this by surveying about 130 plant species to see when they come into bloom and when they finish blooming. Also at that meeting was Melissa Duda, a college student majoring in ecological studies. We agreed to take on a part of the Lake in the Hills Fen for the phenology surveys. After we had done a few, Melissa had a number of questions about the fen. So we decided to put together an interview where she could ask her questions that I would answer. But because of COVID, we couldn't do sort of a normal interview where we would sit down together and have a question and then an answer. So we decided to each record our own part separately and then splice them together in post-production. So that's what we've done. This video is a result of that collaboration. COVID has made us all adapt. We hope you enjoy it. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about your background and what is your role at the Lake in the Hills Fen? Hello, I'm David Schwegler. Um, I've been a volunteer at Lake in the Hills Fen since before it was a state nature preserve and that happened in 1990. I began volunteering out there in the late 80s. And during all these years, I've participated in just about every kind of activity that volunteers can do. Uh, cutting brush, collecting and dispersing seeds. I've monitored birds uh, for the Bird Conservation Network. I've monitored butterflies and rare plants for the Plants of Concern organization that's uh, sponsored by the Chicago Botanic Garden. I've also led walks and have tried to pass on what I know. So those of you who only know me from those activities might be surprised to learn that my academic training is actually in music and education. I have a bachelor's and master's degree from the music school at Northwestern University and a PhD from the music education department of the University of Iowa. My first job out of college was as an elementary junior high school band director at Teft Junior High in Streamwood, which was part of the large District U46, uh, centrally located in Elgin. And in the uh, 19, oh, it, and then after about oh, 10 years, I became the first band director at Streamwood High School. In the 1980s, I moved to Iowa City, rented out my house here in Lake in the Hills, and earned my PhD while also teaching there. So you may wonder how all of that relates to uh, an interest in monitoring and, and engaged in nature activities. But that's been a lifelong interest, and I actually have proof of that. When I was in first grade, my teacher, Miss Mogan, who I remember well, had us write stories that uh, she collected during the year as soon as we were able to write. So the first stories were like C. Jane, you know, C. Spot from the... From the uh, Dick and Jane books of the time. But by March, I was a little more creative, and I talked about in, the, in this paper I wrote seeing robins, a couple of robins fighting, and then the next day I saw a couple more robins, and then I admitted I didn't actually see them, I only heard them singing. So that's uh, 70 years of, of observing uh, nature. How was the Lake in the Hills Fen established? And how did the local community play a role in getting the Fen to how it stands today? I find this to be a particularly difficult question to answer. As you can imagine, setting aside 500 acres of prime real estate in the fast-growing northwestern suburbs of Chicago is a very difficult undertaking. Scientists were aware of the special features, geological features, and plants and animals at Lake in the Hills Fen for many years before it was saved. Um, in particular, around 1977, 
the state of Illinois embarked on a, on a process of finding and, and documenting natural areas into a database called the Natural Areas Inventory. But even with the knowledge of the amazing fauna and flora at the Fen, getting the land purchased and protected from development took about 15 years. If I were to describe all the twists and turns in this process, this podcast would be hours long. Early in the process, the land came up for sale. Nature Conservancy bid on it, but were outbid by Material Service, a gravel mining company. Oh my! I was not involved and had not even heard of the Fen, which was known then as Spring Hill Farm Fen during this time. But fortunately, a friend of mine, Don Pern, the first steward at the Fen, kept a scrapbook with all the newspaper clippings over that 15-year period. He gave me that book over 30 pages long, and I have made several copies. The original is in the MCCD archives. We can see that grants were offered but expired. Lake in the Hills and Crystal Lake feuded over land ownership. Material Service offered to donate the wetlands to the fen, of the Fen to Lake in the Hills, but then would mine the gravel rich uplands. Conservationists had to patiently explain that the fens would likely dry up as a result or at least lose their special alkaline property as they depend upon the calcium rich groundwater discharge. More encouraging, local conservation leaders like Jill Moreland, and Bill and Alice Howenstein led public walks to inspire demand for preservation. Bill Wingate, for whom the Wingate Prairie in Crystal Lake is named, instituted a letter-writing campaign to Jim Thompson, the Illinois governor. Bill told me the governor at one point called him to say he had got the message. In addition, volunteers conducted prescribed burns that were done to keep the area healthy. The village president at the time was Barbara Key. She was a wily politician and had the skill to push for a deal. Finally, in June of 1988, two grants were put together and used just days before they were to expire to, to buy the, uh, the gravel rich areas from the materials service, after which they were willing to donate the wet uh, lowlands to the village of Lake and Hills. So the two grants were Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund of $593,000 and from the state of Illinois, Build Illinois Natural Area Acquisition Funds in the amount of $740,000. So a grand total of $1,333,000 was transferred to material service. And finally, then we had the main 250 acres, which became the Lake and the Hills Fen State Nature Reserve, uh, protected. But this was not the end of the land acquisition by any means. Some years later, in order to keep the gravel mining a little bit farther away, uh, to not impede the water flow into the fens, the state of Illinois purchased an additional buffer area to the north. The Conservation District became involved and purchased some lands that abutted the preserve to the northwest and, and so extending the preserve out to Randall Road. The Village of Lake in the Hills purchased land along Jefferson on the, on the western edge of the preserve, but they wanted to develop that into a new site for a village hall. And unfortunately, uh, you know, well, those of us who volunteered out there didn't like that idea at all. We much preferred to keep the natural uh, viewscape as it was. It turned into a political uh, controversy, and uh, when that particular village president came up for re-election, uh, another candidate promised not to put the village hall there, and conservation voters turned out and voted in favor of that candidate. So at this point, the village owns property that they don't really have anything to do with, and so, fortunately, the Conservation District stepped up again and purchased that and have since um, seeded that and turned it into a very wonderful uh, prairie restoration. 
there is an additional amount of acreage, maybe 25 uh, that uh, abuts the preserve to the east known as Dome Hill. It's a glacial cane that's owned by the village. So all of these areas that are contiguous now form the 500 acre preserve that we have. Barb Wilson was an important figure at the Lake in the Hills Fen. Can you explain her importance and her legacy at the Fen? By 1988, I had moved back to my home in Lake in the Hills. I signed up for one of the public walks promoting the Fen. Soon after, I got a call from Jill Moreland, the volunteer coordinator for Nature Conservancy in the Chicago area, asking me to volunteer at the Fen. She also recruited Barb Wilson, another local resident, at the same time. We didn't know each other, but soon discovered we had a common interest in the flora. For the next several years, we walked the preserve every Saturday morning during the growing season, tried to figure out what flowers we saw blooming, and kept track of approximately where they were. Although we were interested, we had no prior knowledge of native species. But we had a list of the plants compiled by botanists during the effort to get the fence saved, and we used simple plant guides like the illustrated book by Peterson to get us started. Eventually, we graduated to more technical books like the flora of the Chicago region. We even took a class on Carex identification from its author, Dr. Gerald Wilhelm. He's a great teacher and used the class to teach us how to carefully use binomial keys which proved useful generally. After Barb retired and had more time, she began to offer classes at the Fen to help anyone interested in plant and even Carex identification, which is pretty arcane. She gained a great following for her lighthearted style and also became known for walks she led at the Fen and other nearby preserves. She spent countless hours finding and documenting the Fen's rarest plants. She participated in conferences, like Wild Things, where she showed up with her Lake in the Hells fan handouts. She died in the spring of 2017. There is a bench with a plaque in her honor on top of a hill with a great view. Many of our current volunteers got their start with Barb and often comment they want to do justice to Barb's legacy. Why is the Lake in the Hills fan geologically interesting. In the name Lake in the Hills, the hills refers to structures deposited by the glaciers at the end of the last ice age, about 20,000 years ago. The Fen has several interesting structures, a cane, an esker, and sand and gravel outwash that has been deeply carved by the stream that bisects the preserve from the northwest to the southeast. This stream, Crystal Creek, must have been vastly larger than the 15-foot wide watercourse we see today. We call the came on the eastern edge of the preserve Dome Hill. We believe it was caused by sand and gravel washing into a fissure in the ice, which, when the ice melted, left this huge hill. The Esker is along the southern border of the preserve, and extends from Crystal Creek west to Jefferson. It was built by a river inside the glacier that dropped sand and gravel out of the water. When the ice melted, a long, sinuous line of gravel was left behind. The deeply carved valley is responsible for the fens, which are wetlands fed by groundwater. When a slope extends below the current water table, water seeps out. In places, the flow is great enough to wash away topsoil, leaving amphitheater-shaped bowls of gravel where only specially adapted plants can survive. Because the groundwater has seeped down through many feet of limestone gravel, the pH is an extraordinary 7.8 that starves most plants of nutrients. There is so much dissolved calcium in the water that some plants exude calcium on their stems and leaves. What makes the Lake in the Hills Fen so unique in regards to the ecosystems that are there? 
We are fortunate to have a healthy upland that supports intact prairie remnants juxtaposed with one of the rarest wetland ecosystems, the fens. That this is preserved in an urban area is thanks to the pertinacity of conservation leaders with the McHenry County Defenders, such as Bill Wingate and Alice Howenstein, who patiently explained that without preserving the uplands, the fens would lose their special alkaline characteristics. Of course, Barbara Key, who was the Lake in the Hills Village president during most of the drive to preserve the fen, had the political skill to finally see the deal with material service finalized. Barbara Key Park, that provides an eastern entrance to the preserve, is named in her honor. Because of the mix of nine distinct native communities, including calcareous floating mat, graminoid fen, low shrub fen, calcareous seep, sedge meadows and marsh, perennial stream, dry gravel prairie, and mesic gravel prairie, we have an amazing flora of over 400 species. That diversity then supports the myriad birds, insects including some rare butterflies, and reptiles that are found here. What rare plant species exist at the Fen? I know there are many species there, so maybe you could just name your favorite ones, and then the ones that are in most in need of conservation efforts. The cold spring water in the Fens emerges at about 55 degrees. This has allowed plant species that are usually found much farther north than Illinois to persist at Lake in the Hills Fen. So, many of them are on the Illinois list of threatened and endangered species. They are small and mostly lack colorful flowers. Some are mostly submerged and extremely difficult to find. This is especially true of the bladderworts that have BB-sized bladders that implode when an aquatic organism touches them, sucking the hapless creature in where it provides needed nutrients. Go to YouTube and search for bladderwort for some videos of them in action. We also have some special prairie species that, while not endangered, are rare and only exist in undisturbed prairie remnants. Prairie smoke, which has the botanical name GM triflorum, meaning three-flowered, gets its common name for its appearance once it goes to seed. The feathery styles with seeds at their base elongate to as much as an inch and a half to aid in seed dispersal. With a bit of imagination, a large colony of these blowing in the breeze can indeed look like smoke. Although I have successfully germinated these, they don't persist in my garden. They seem to require the lean soil and neighboring prairie plants that my garden doesn't provide. Another favorite of mine are the late blooming gentians. Very few flowers in nature have such pure, deep blue color. Prairie gentians in particular require undisturbed remnants, and at Lake in the Hills they hybridize with their wetland cousins, bottle gentians, to produce the very rare Billington's gentian. These have the upright stature of bottle gentians, with barely open flowers halfway between the open trumpets of the prairie gentian and the closed bottles of their cousin. We just discovered these hybrids at the Fen in September of 2017. One of the hardest management challenges to overcome is caused by the isolation of our natural areas, genetic inbreeding. Plants that have become extirpated at the Fen, like snake moth orchids, dwindled over time and are now gone. We need area-wide cooperation to cross-pollinate with vigorous colonies. This is beyond our volunteers without some kind of agency support. How important is volunteering to the Lake in the Hills Fen? Although we had intact remnants of the most extreme ecosystems such as the tops of the hills and the alkaline fens, 
there were many acres where non-native trees and shrubs had taken over, such as buckthorn, honeysuckle, multiflora rose, the usual suspects. Two early stewards, Don Pern and Al Wilson, and the volunteers they recruited worked tirelessly and effectively transformed these degraded areas so that today it is hard to remember what they looked like 30 years ago. In addition to this brush cutting, volunteers have collected seeds from the remnants and sown them so that it is hard to distinguish remnant from restoration. Volunteers also supplement the crews of the McHenry County Conservation District staff to help with prescribed burns that are essential to keep the non-native species at bay. Volunteers, with the help and supervision of MCCD staff, do all the monitoring of plants, birds, and butterflies. The reports they produce help guide restoration efforts. This year alone, monitors will look for breeding birds in nine locations a couple of times during June. We will look for butterflies weekly from June until September. About 10 rare plant monitors will find and count about 14 species at over 20 locations within the preserve. How can listeners get involved in activities at the Lake in the Hills Fen? I recommend you use the links at the Lake in the Hills Fen website that will connect you with the volunteer pages of the organizations we work with. Our URL is L-I-T-H-F-E-N dot O-R-G. If you are seeing this on YouTube, look for a link in the description below the video. Hey, the Fen is a great place. Melissa and I hope to see you out there.